Good morning, everyone. I want to start by giving an update on Sergeant Michael Hutchinson, who sustained injuries at senior on Thursday night. He underwent surgery yesterday and remains in hospital overnight for observations. He is likely to be discharged sometime over the weekend or early next week. The offender remains in hospital and his condition has not changed and is life threatening. Um, police are investigating a serious crash at Gore Beach overnight. At about 9 pm last night, emergency services were called to Beach Road after a pedestrian was struck by a car. The pedestrian was 18 year old Charlie Stevens, the son of Commissioner Grant Stevens and his wife Emma. Charlie sustained irreversible pain injury and he is on life support. He's with his family who are waiting for other family members from interstate to arrive. As you can imagine, this is a very difficult statement for him. I offer my condolences to Grant Emma and the family, as well as the wider community, including Charlie's friends and his workmates. We always talk about this happening to other people. But the reality is, it can happen to anyone, any family, or anyone in the community. The sense of grief is always enormous, and also today. I would ask that you respect the family at this time, um, as they um, come together through this grieving process. I'll add that the car involved in the collision did not stop at the scene. It was located by police a short distance away on Port Elliot Road, Gilbert. The driver of that car, the alleged offender is an 18-year-old male who has been charged with drive dangerous or serious harm and aggravated due care and leave the scene of an accident. I urge any witnesses who have any information to contact Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000. As you appreciate, both events of yesterday have had a profound, very profound effect on South Australia Police and on the wider South Australian community. And I just want to recognise the efforts of our staff yesterday and throughout last night and today because they have been courageous, each and every one of them. And whilst we're all feeling the effects of these dreadful circumstances, they are uniting in their support for each other in a way that I cannot describe. And I'm so proud of them. We appreciate the support and the love that we feel from the community every day. And we are very dedicated to keeping this community as safe as we can. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Linda. SAPOL is very much a family, and they work so incredibly hard to keep us all safe. Last night, uh, I had a chance to speak to the police commissioner in the early hours of the evening and we were talking about the events that unfolded in the southeast of our state. And it struck me just how determined Grant was to make sure that the welfare of his people in Sapol was the paramount consideration in his mind. He was actively canvassing with me uh, his thoughts around how he would show leadership to the, member of the members of the Safe Hole family at a difficult time uh, for this important institution. For only hours later, uh, for the tragic news to reach him that his son had been involved in a terribly unfortunate accident. Now, Grant Stevens has served South Australia uh, as a member of South Australian Police for over 40 years. His whole life he has dedicated himself to protecting others, protecting South Australians from evil, protecting us from disease. He has shown extraordinary leadership in some of the most difficult circumstances this state has ever confronted. It is just so unjust that he and his family have now had to endure uh, this great tragedy themselves. The entirety of the state, our thoughts are with Commissioner Stevens and his beautiful wife, Emma, and all of their children. Uh, they are good people. We all too often find ourselves desperately wishing that bad things don't happen to good people. 
yet too often that is the case. And this is clearly an example of it. To each and every member of the entire SAPOL community, the state stands with you at this difficult time. We thank you so much for everything that you do for each and every one of us and our families. And just as you protect us, we stand with you during a difficult period. Questions? Are we able to ask just a few questions about the sure. investigation itself? Um, you know, the premise said this was an accident. Is that, the, is that what the investigation is leading towards? So this is still subject to an um, inquiry by Major Crime and Major Correction and Major Crime at this stage. Um, it's very, very early stages in the investigation. Is there any indication that alcohol may have been involved in it? As I say, it's, it, this is still subject to an investigation. It's, not, it's very early. Um, we're not giving 24 hours in, so um, the fullness of time that we're giving had Charlie he's finished high school? So, yeah. so Charlie um, was an apprentice, he was an apprentice carpenter. Um, he very much loved what he did, um, and he has just recently um, applied for becoming a, an apprentice at the law school. Um, just on the situation in Watertown, are there any changes under consideration to the way police approach potentially dangerous situations? Uh, no, our officers um, are, are very well trained in operational safety philosophy. Um, and um, whilst the incident itself will be subject to review on, on the face of it, it appears that um, the officers conducted themselves in an exemplary manner and followed um, appropriate operational safety protocols. But as I say, it will be subject to a full um, review. Was the gun the suspect used a registered firearm? Uh, my, uh, my understanding is I haven't had that information from investigators yet. It will be the subject of investigation. It, um, is the suspect part of? The sovereign citizen um, nationalist movement? There is no indications of any connection with any such movement. How does Constable Cass do? Uh, Constable Cass has been well supported. Clearly, it was a very, very traumatic experience for her. Um, she's been surrounded by the uh, fellow officers and her family and friends. Um, but as you would imagine, a very traumatic event. Um, so we, always, we often talk about physical toll on people, um, but we can't underestimate the uh, mental impact that this has on, on lots of officers, including those at the scene. If we are able, sorry to get back to the lawyers momentarily. So is Major Crime and Major Crash there at the moment? At? At Gore. Um, they, are, they are in attendance and have been, yes. And was Charlie and the... Um, the other 18 year old under arrest, were they both there for schoolies? Does that understand? Um, I don't know about the um, alleged offender, what, uh, what he was there for, but um, Charlie was certainly in the area with his friends as part of uh, as, uh, schoolies activities. He's, obviously, his friends have been helped help with counselling and things like that. Yeah, everyone has been, has been well supported um, um, in terms of their welfare. Um, obviously, has a very far reaching. Um, um, in, into the community and Charlie's friends and family and um, if anyone needs assistance then they can reach out and we'll certainly be able to provide them with those resources if they, if they need any further help. Just regarding the Commissioner's inquiry into the um, incident near Border Town, can you talk to us about what they'll be looking into, like will it be the circumstances around the incident? So there's, uh, one, there's an investigation in terms of the Commission's inquiry We'll also look at our policy, our practices, and our training. Um, that's a standard uh, process after such an incident, um, and that will help us to inform if there are any learnings out of this that um, that can lead to any improvements if they are required. Great, thanks, everyone. Good question. If I could, Premier, just one last one. Premier, that's like that. Sure, sorry. Uh, I'd imagine that uh, the Commission's probably going to take quite a bit of time off. Are you anticipating a long tenure of just leave? Um, when I spoke to the police commissioner this morning, I was pretty clear about the fact that um, he just needs to look after himself and his family, and we're very fortunate that St. Paul is a well-known organisation from the ground up and right down, particularly having Deputy Commissioner Linda Williams, who has served as Acting Commissioner on more than one occasion, so we're very confident in that regard. The other sort of remarks I'll make is to the young people of our state, all of their lives are precious, and it is just so important that we all remember that in a moment of complete stupidity or an impulsive act, the consequences can be so incredibly severe for everyone around you. So just try and think through your actions um, every step of the way. It could be the difference between lives and families being turned upside down or not. So I mean, you spoke to the Commission this morning, that must have been on behalf of Frank Williams. 
the, the police commissioner is one of the most decent people I know, and uh, he and his family don't deserve this. Um, and our thoughts around the state of the firm, first and foremost. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.